Um, my name's Tom Nelson, and we're here in a uh, abandoned shop here, uh, just because it's quiet. I've been building motors pretty much since I was 11, uh, but uh, professionally I started the, my company in 1995. Our main specialty these days is, is turbocharged engines, but we do everything supercharged, naturally aspirated, injected, um, but mainly V8 style engines. You know, 20 years, I think the first 10 years, I worked 17 hours a day. You learned so much, you know, I mean, that's all I did was, I mean, eat, sleep and breathe it. There's so many things that come across when you are doing this every day. You know, luckily I've done it long enough now to where we've kind of got some things figured out, but there was no easy road, that's for sure, I mean, when my buddies were partying, I was out, I was in the shop getting greasy, you know, and they came back with the bitching stories and I was still greasy, you know. <laughs> uh, we built, you know, that the, the car, the F-bomb, it's pretty you know, famous car, we built it for David Freiberger, he, at the time was the editor of Hot Rod. We, had, we got the cover of Hot Rod and, and you know, it said like 1,000 horse, uh, daily driver, 1,500 horse for the weekends. And that was like a big thing because I was, you know, pushing Freiberger to show everybody and then, you know, he came down and watched the dyno and was like, holy shit, we need to put some cage in this car. We need to like put some safety in this thing. And it was always been my push to kind of show people what you know what the capabilities of these things are and you know like recently after like mega years we ended up taking to the track with a tranny that actually worked and at any rate at only 21 pounds of boost now that motor is like something that you could it's it's basically a 350 chevy crate motor the way it drives like it drives like a 350 crate you know even sounds like a 350 crate which is not even that bitching you know until it gets under boost of course but on street tires through the mufflers, you know, first day back, it went 9-0 at like 155 miles an hour at only 21 pounds of boost, and the motor makes 36 pounds. So that's, just, that's a good, solid eight-second car that literally your mom can go get in and drive, you know? And it would be mellow, and it'll cool, and it'll idle, and it'll just, it's just chill. And to think you can go to zero to 160 miles an hour in eight seconds, and something that you can drive anywhere, it's crazy, but that's what's happening right now. We were doing this back in 2000, and everybody was like, yeah, but it doesn't run good, and you can't have that streetable, but of course, it was all happening. So I've been pushing and pushing, and now everybody is on the bandwagon and doing it. And there's a thousand guys out there doing it, you know? So, you know, people making 2,000 horsepower, I don't think I'm, I don't, I don't think I'm unique in that. I think where we make ourselves unique is we do it with, you know, a, a style, a certain amount of art. We've been doing it for 20 years, so we know what works and what doesn't work. So it lives, it looks good, it functions, you know. And that's, that's what the 20 years has given us, you know. Centrifugal roots, turbocharged, you know, screw blower. So those are your, those are your uh, categories. Well, roots are, are, are cool. I mean, you know, um, there's nothing that quite sounds like a, a, a roots. Uh, you know, they got that big eight millimeter pulley where the air is just woo, you know, and then you get the overdriven idle and everything. So uh, roots definitely have their cool factor they're really terrible on efficiency, uh, but when you start putting alcohol through them or nitro, they start working pretty good. 
but on gas they're 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 pretty terrible as far as efficiency goes. Um, they're big; you're gonna have to stick them through the hood. So you know people don't like doing that, but some people do. I mean, I'm one of them. I like I like a big root steel with two carbs and and everything, but it's it's just not for everybody. And then then you get into like a screw blower. They make this instant low speed power, um, and they're a bit more efficient than than a roots and they're a little more compact uh, than a roots. Um, you know, blowers versus turbos, the, the big advantage of a blower is it's a lot easier. You know, you can bolt blowers on where turbos, it's a lot more difficult. You gotta build exhaust, you gotta do intake plumbing, all sorts of stuff. The, the blower companies out, out there, they've made it pretty easy. You can just bolt this thing on and, and you can go. So the screw blower, I'd say, Obviously, Roots, very cool, definitely has a cool factor, not very efficient. And then you get into a centrifugal, um, and centrifugals are really RPM dependent. So centrifugals are even more efficient so, but they don't have that low speed, you know, bang like a screw blower does or a root, root blower does. You have to drive it with a belt. So, you know, in a street car, you try to put a serpentine on it, you're only gonna make so much power before you start slipping that serpentine. There's a lot of harmonic going on with that belt that you're not gonna get any slip and the main bearings and the main see all of that. So like on a turbo motor, I could do 100 pulls and I could tear the motor down, I could look at the bearings and the bearings look cherry. On a blown motor, I could do 100 pulls and you can tear it down and the main bearings look like they're beat because in my opinion, the belt is just beating the f out of them, you know, from all the harmonic. But they have a pretty high efficiency, so you can make, like if, I always tell everybody, like if you're looking to make like 900 horse or less, then a Roots or a Centrifugal are sweet. Um, but if you're looking to make 900 horse or more, um, then, you know, you can still make that with the Roots and you can still make that with the screw blowers, but then you're gonna go into like a uh, centrifugal, like a Pro Charger or Vortec, or you're gonna get into a turbo. Even though a turbo uses exhaust to spin it, and you would think, oh, well that's gonna, you know, have back pressure. It doesn't, if you look at like the torque figures of a, F3 versus a 98 or something. The torque on the turbocharged motor is through the roof compared to the centrifugal blown deal because it takes a lot of power to drive. The, the biggest con with turbo is cost and the fabrication involved to install it. Always the turbo seems like the, the harder installation. The pros, is there's nothing that makes power like the turbos do unless you're you know on nitro or something but uh there's just nothing i mean it's just once you experience like a, a twin turbo car it's hard to go back to anything else really you know And they're quiet, you can put really mellow cam timing in them. You can have a motor that's like a 450 horse motor that you drive every day, but then when you get into boost, it makes 2000 horsepower, you know? And um, that's like a huge uh, pro for me, is, is that you, it, it's like a split personality. You got this daily driver that, you know, that's what we really build is we build all these like, you know, quote, daily drivers but when you get in them, they're just complete animals. For me, obviously, I think my love is twin turbos. I mean, I love engines in general. And I mean, I, you know, I've, I've built a zillion Roots motors, I've built a zillion centrifugal motors, I've built a zillion screw blower motors, but we usually call them a two for one when we build a turbo motor. That's actually how we really started getting into turbochargers. We were doing, a, we had an account for offshore racing and we were doing all these 1471, 572s with dual dominators. And they were making like 1200 horse, you know, offshore. And, and then we stepped into a twin turbo big block and made twice the power. 
you know, we're like, holy crap, it's a two for one, you know, and it lived twice as long at twice the power. So after that, I was just like, oh man, you know, so then I wanted, you know, we were doing a lot of this stuff in the bolt world, but the bolt world wasn't necessarily my thing. I was always in the street cars. You know, my thing is something that you can drive. I mean, I mean, I like drag racing and, you know, we used to do it all the time. I mean, I used to make a living street racing, but my thing is being able to get in a car and enjoy the hell out of it and drive it for your, for your car and be, you know, but still have all this crazy power, drive it to work and back, take it out for Saturday and Sunday, take it to Vegas, whatever, but have a car that makes 1800, 2000 horsepower that you can do all that with. And then, you know, that's what I started implementing the turbo motors into the street world with that. Well, there's definitely, there's always a balance between power and reliability. I mean, everything determines the reliability of a force induction motor. I mean, it, it's that kind of way in general of, a, of any engine really, but um, every facet of it, of an engine pushing that kind of horsepower, there's really nothing that can be overlooked. If you do overlook it, you end up with a, you know, with parts on the floor, you know. So there, there really isn't just one thing; it's it's everything, you know. And when I first started the company, all I was searching for was power. So I was willing to sacrifice reliability for power, but over time, you realize that, especially in a turbo motor you don't need to sacrifice power and reliability. You can have a cam that's mellow. You can have compression ratios that are mellow. You don't need crazy amounts of crank. You don't need pretty much anything other than a really solid, strong foundation with really good fuel management, really good fuel supply, and good cooling system on the motor. And you can make all the power you ever need for the street and be as reliable as you want it to be. So once you realize that, like I was, you know, I mean, on the street, really, you don't need any more than 1200, 1200 horsepower. 1200 horsepower get you in trouble any day of the week. Well, heat makes, the heat heats what makes everything work, right? So um, like even down to, you know, when the spark plug lights, it's a burn that, that's pushing that piston down. So when you keep heat in to spin that wheel, you're gonna spin that wheel that much harder. But there's obviously a, a fine line because if you can't get the heat out of the engine, you're gonna burn the piston, you're gonna you know, take the tension out of the rings, or you're gonna pop a head gasket. So there's, there's a fine line between too much heat and, and the right amount. I think it took us five years to figure out how to get the cars to cool right. Because when we first started building them, we started putting these big intercoolers in front of the radiator. And then that wasn't that big a deal, but then everybody was like, well, I want my cake and eat it too. So I want the car to have an AC. So then you got an AC condenser in front of the radiator. And I want this and I want that. And all of a sudden, now you have this big heat generating nightmare and then they're like I want stock hood I want it to fit all under you got fender wells a stock hood the heat can't get out so we've through the years went through renditions of how we go about doing things so now we have this huge monster radiator and turbo cars they really don't get that hot going down the road they get hot sitting in traffic like perfect example one of my customers sits on the 405 to go to work every day where it's just bumper to bumper and you got a turbo motor sitting there just, you know, cooking stuff under the hood. You need a lot of airflow. So you need really big fans and then you need a big size radiator and you need to not obstruct the radiator. So you need to keep things away from the radiator so air gets flown past. So we've now moved to, we now switched to water to air intercoolers that are completely away from the radiator. We have massive fans. We run like twin 18 inch Dodge Viper fans that flow like 4,000 CFM each, you know? And then even from that, we even can go to like a hydraulically operated one if, you know, if it's for something like Dubai or something where they're 115 degrees or something. But 
at any rate, it's taken a lot of years to kind of figure that out. And then beyond the motor, then you get into a tranny that can handle that kind of power. If it's automatic or something, you got a lot of converter slip, you got a ton of transmission heat, so you need a big ass tranny cooler, you need fans on that. If you're, if you're really pounding it, you need a diff cooler, power steering cooler, and then you need heat exchangers for your intercoolers. So it's like, a. that's why I was saying, like if you want to go blown, it's like done. You want to go big 2,000 horse twin turbo street car, the whole car has to be built around the engine. It's not like you can just slap that engine in and go. You got to have suspension, you got to have rear end, you got to have cooling system, you got to have fuel system. So it's an entire build, you know. Uh, no doubt in my mind, you know, I mean, people don't always, you know, do this, but if you're going to supercharge something, I personally think you should have a forged pistons, you should have forged rods, forged bottom end, keep the compression relatively low, um, and definitely have a good fuel management system on it, you know, to where you know what the air fuel ratios are, under boost, you don't have to worry about n the pump not keeping up or not enough injector or something like that because you're for sure going to burn it down if you don't. So you need a good fuel system, you need a good fuel management, and then you need a foundation that can take that kind of power. You, you definitely, you know, there's no doubt that I don't want to discourage anybody that doesn't have, you know, all the resources to go put forty thousand dollars into a twin turbo motor there's guys out there like matt happel who are like open source that are giving out all of his tunes for free and giving out his combinations for free and he does stuff with stock five threes that are just amazing you see this piece of crap four door going like high eights or low nines on a stock five three bottom end you definitely can do it. There's no doubt about it. You can do it with a Chinese turbo and stock LS architecture. I mean, I don't think it lives that long. That's not the way I do things, but there are people that are doing it and I wouldn't discourage it. If you can't afford to do it and you want to get into the game, go ahead and do it. Just know that, you know, if you want to, if you want to play, you got to pay. So you're going to pay a little bit here and there, but you can definitely do it. And you know, uh, I, I, I wouldn't be one to say that you can't, uh, you can. I honestly will tell you that I am no engineer by any means. The only, we, the only way we've learned what we've learned is I'm a shade tree guy. We just do, we just put the stuff together and what works is what we use. You know, I'd like to think that I, I make intelligent decisions based off of, you know, reading and everything, but really what really works is when you put it all together and you test it and it does work. You know, you can go and theorize about a thousand different things, but we're actually doing it. And for what I do, I think I do a nice job, you know? <laughs>